Now, all right, my screen tells me I'm live. So let me check on my page. And be sure that I'm live on my page. There we go. Okay. Happening now. All right. My screen tells me. I so let me check on my page. But I'm live on my page. Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. There we go. Okay. Happening now. All right. So, going on here. so at least I know it's working. At least I know I'm live on my page. Uh, I hope it's not stuttering. Hope there's not like delay. I hope the screen is not freezing and that it's hard to hear my voice. If it is, tell me in the chat. I'm not sure, you know, if it's the internet connection because some days it works just fine and then some days it looks like it, you know, slows down or stutters or whatever. So if my screen is freezing or you haven't, or like if the sound is not in sync with the visual, then let me know in the chat um, because I might not always be able to see that on my end. Okay. So we give people a few minutes to come on, but we're going to start right at 2.30 because, you know, I like to be punctual because God is punctual and because we do our best for our jobs and we do our best for everything that we care about. We tend to do our best and then somehow we have this idea that we're supposed to throw the Lord our leftovers or be sloppy or whatever. And no, so I'm going to start right at 2.30 because that's my time. And then we're going to go from there. I'm excited about today's word too. So yeah, last week wasn't feeling well. Had a lot of stuff going on. Hey, is my sister? Hey, sis. So I had a lot of stuff going on. Really needed to rest, but I'm feeling a lot better now. So praise God for that. Can you hear me and see me? Okay, is the screen freezing? Is the screen freezing or is it coming through and uh, is my sound in sync or is it out of sync? Uh, because I'm never sure. I can't always tell on this end what's happening or no. So let me know in the chat if you can see me and hear me okay and if the screen is freezing or not and if the sound is congruent or not. So I'm going to give people a few more minutes to come on. I'm gonna start right at 2.30, but yeah, I'm feeling a lot better. Uh, I had to rest up and, um, you know, have to take care of yourself because we do live in clay bodies. I know there's a great tendency for people to think that, you know, if you're serving God that, you know, that somehow makes you superhuman, but it, it doesn't. You know, you still gotta have balance. Even God himself rested after the creation week and you still have to take care of yourself. So, so I had to slow down to do that, but praise God, I'm back. Super excited with a new prophetic word. There's so much snow in Chicago. I don't know where you're you're watching me from, but in Chicago, we got feet. <laughs> Ooh, Lord. We got three and four feet of snow. It's a trip. So it's coming down, but that's kind of, what comes along with being in Chi Town. So, all right, it's two thirty. Here we go. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you for this time. Thank you for the uh, ability, and the honor, and the privilege to be used of your God, because it's about you and your kingdom. So, I come before you right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, not standing in my own righteousness, but the righteousness that was given to me in Christ through grace. Lord, I die to myself, Lord. I must decrease, so you can increase. So breathe through me right now, God. Let your will be done. Let what you want said to be said. Let your words come through, that you might be glorified in all things, and that your body might be edified 
by the preaching and teaching and prophesying of your word and that the demons might be terrified, oh God, the word of truth is going forth and our faith is being increased because nothing can stop us when we hear, believe and obey you. We thank you for it, we believe you for it and we declare and decree in the name of Jesus that signs and wonders and miracles shall follow all that hear, believe and obey this prophetic word. We thank you for it right now. We're looking for you to do great things. In Jesus name, amen. Amen, amen, all right. 30 degrees in Atlanta, wow, okay. All right, today's prophetic word is expect a miracle. Today's prophetic word is expect a miracle. Now, the scripture that we're going to read is actually gonna be talking about a financial miracle. Uh, so those are always good because when do we not want a financial miracle? When is that ever bad news? Okay. Um, and don't let anybody teach you that, you know, Jesus Christ wasn't about money. The first sermon the Lord preached started with money and ended with money. I don't have time to go through that right now. But when the Lord said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has known me to preach the gospel to the poor. The last thing he talked about was acceptable year of the Lord. That's talking about the year of Jubilee. So the first sermon that the Lord preached started with money and ended with money. So don't be listening to people tell you that money isn't a part of the kingdom of God. Yes, it is. And that God isn't about, isn't about money. Yes, he is. So we're going to read today. And I, I actually have to read this whole chapter. We're going to read today. Second Kings seven. I'm going to put that in the chat. We're going to read second Kings chapter seven. It's not long, but I do have to read the whole thing. Okay. Um, because it's talking about <clears throat> the Lord changing the economy of a nation in a day. I'm gonna say that one more time. Second Kings seven is about the Lord changing the economy of a nation in a day. Okay, that's very, very relevant in these times we live in now because we live, we, we just lived through a year where stuff like that happened. So don't tell me God can't do it on the judgment side. If God can do it on the judgment side, God can do it on the restoration side. Okay, so I'm gonna go to Second Kings chapter seven. We're gonna read that and then we're gonna go from there. Okay, Second Kings is in the Old Testament. The prophet being featured in this chapter is the prophet Elisha. Elisha was the successor to Elijah and they were both miracle workers. Elijah had a strong miracle mantle. And when he showed up, the first thing he said, the first Bible mention of the prophet Elijah was that he told the king that the heavens were gonna be shut up and there wasn't gonna be any rain until he said so. That's the first thing he said and that's the first thing he did. He showed up walking in miracle level power. So Elisha was the successor that God had picked. Don't, don't ever believe that Elijah picked Elisha or Elisha appointed himself. No, God told Elijah that Elisha was to be his successor, if you didn't know that. And uh, because you can't appoint yourself to be a prophet. So many people out here you're running around trying to take the title or whatever, you can't appoint yourself to be no prophet. That's something God does. And that's who's speaking is Elisha, the successor to Elijah, and they both work miracles. Elisha asked God for a double portion, twice as much of Elijah's spirit, uh, spirit his miracle mantle, and Elisha did twice the miracles that Elijah did, okay? Why am I spending time with that? Why is that so important? Because if you want to walk in miracles, you have to hear it. Haven't you ever read the Bible and wondered why some of the stuff that's in the Bible, why don't we see more of that now? The answer to that question is because we have to believe for it, that's why. Because you have to hear it, you have to believe it, and you have to obey it. Your faith has to be stirred in the area of miracles. And the only way to stir your faith is to hear the word of God preached about miracles, okay? So that's what we're talking about today. And this miracle today is a financial miracle. Okay, so here we go, 2 Kings 7. I'm reading out of the King James Version. Then Elisha said, hear ye the word of 
of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold, be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Then a Lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord the windows in heaven be, he meaning Elisha said, Behold, thou shalt see, but thou shalt go. Four operating at the entering gate, they said one to another, die. If we say we will enter into the city, then the family, and we shall die there. And if we sit still here, we die. Now therefore, call unto the host, save us alive, that we shall die. It was I like to go to the camp of the Syrians. And when they were the uttermost part, there were a noise of chits and a noise of horses, even the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, Lo, the king of Israel hath hired against us the king of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. Wherefore they arose and fled in the twilight and left their tents and their horses and their asses. Even the camp, even the camp to the uttermost part of the camp, they went into one tent and drank silver and raiment and came again and entered another tent and carried this also and went and hid it. Then they said one to another, we do not God well. This day is a day of good tidings and we hold our peace. If we tarry until the morning light, some mischief will come upon us. Now therefore come that we may go and tell the king's household. So they came and cleansed, and behold, there was no man there. Now the voice of man, but horses tied and asses tied and the tents as they were. And he called the porters and they told it to the, to the king's house within. And the king arose in the night and said unto his servants, I will now show you what the Syrians have done to us. They know that we be hungry. Therefore are they gone out of the camp to hide themselves in the field, saying, When they come out, shall catch them alive. And one of his servants answered and said, Let some take, I pray thee, five of the horses that remain, which are left in the city. Behold, there are as the multitude of Israel that are left in it. Behold, I say, there are even as all the multitude of the Israelites that are consumed, and let us send and see. They took therefore two chariot horses for those, and they went after the, to Jordan, and lo, all the way was full of garments, souls, which the seen their haste, and messengers returned. And the people went out and took tents of the Syrians. So a measure of fine flour was sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for according to the word. And they appointed the Lord on whom he leaned to have charge of the the gate. And the people trolled upon him the gate, and he does of God. It's the king came down to him. And it is a man God king saying, There's a barrel shall be tar up in the gate. And the Lord answered the man of God, Oh, that the Lord should make windows in heaven, might such a thing be. And he said, Behold, thou shalt see what eat there. And so it fell out unto him. But the people trolled on him in the gate. Twenty years old chapter incredible story okay we need to glean some principles from that chapter here we go from the top it said here ye were thus said far about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of samaria what that means is elisha prophetic word he released it and he said tomorrow Twenty-four hours, a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel. Fine flour was expensive. Two measures of barley for a shekel. What that meant was that the expensive people. Okay. Then one of the staff of the king responded to what Elisha said and said, "If God, God made windows in heaven, then might this thing be?" And Elisha. Said, you're going to see it with your eyes, but you're not 
than an eagle. So the first thing that we want to glean is you want to put limit on God. Now, you enough faith in that, that, that principle. We had over uninterrupted growth and age. And all of things were lost between March and April of 2020. So people have been 8, 10, 12 years and all that gone in a very short amount. Don't tell God I can't do it in a short amount of time. But this is talking about okay. So first thing you need to learn from this is don't put on God. Don't put limits on God just because Man, doesn't God can do it? That's why you don't see circle in the church because people stop believing on that level. On that level, you have to draw it out of him by faith. You got to stir it up. You got to believe God, and when you do hear it, you got to preach it, prophesy it, and teach it. And Elisha, that level of miracles. So he said, in, in 24 hours, the fine stuff is going to be plentiful and it's going to be. And this challenge is if because of God put us ahead of all, can this happen? Elisha, see it. You know? Second thing is, is challenging the prophetic word. If you're listening to the prophet of God and their words are coming and you person, that woman is a person of God. The whole God gives them something. Don't don't you act like because you're spitting on God, it's not that person. God do that. And there's so many times in the Bible it's word against her, and God judge. Like when Gabriel and Zachariah that they were gonna have John the Baptist. Elizabeth accepted that. But Zachariah was like, you know, how do I know? And I know you said John didn't believe, and Gabriel struck him mute. Gabriel struck him dumb. So you spit on it. Don't you belittle it. Don't you, don't you spit his face like that. Because Elisha said the consequences of this man doubting the very word of God was that he was going to see it happen, but he wasn't going to get the benefit. Oh, oh. can you imagine God releases a prophetic word and you doubt it, you spit on it, you, you belittle it, and then God lets you live long, long enough to see it come to pass, but you get no benefit from it. That's exactly what happened to this dude. So the second thing we want to see is don't in mind, don't you doubt prophetic, okay? The rest, we say that there were four in the gates, much figure news because they were going to die anyway. They sat and captured my die. Um, famine was in the city. Um, the die. Background of all this happening was that there had things had been kind of like in America. You know, when we had a, the great toilet paper search, the 2020, a bottle of water, a bottle of water, went to the fire. Just the shelves were, were stripped like locusts. So there had been famine in the city. And so the lepers like, we know nothing left the city. Might, if they're, you might let us stay, but they might let us too. So we have to lose. And like, to go into the, this camp. When they got there, the Syrians were gone. <clears throat> the next we have to glean is that sometimes you get a miracle when you nothing left to lose. Option. You don't have anywhere else you got nothing left to lose. I sometimes when you get miracles, I can get sometimes out of options. You might point to that thing and say it is this thing.
Because of that thing, oh, okay, that's my phone now. Because of the thing, the thing that I got delivered. But when you have been busted, nothing, that's when you get the courage to go for stuff, because what do you have to lose? Like the levers, what do you you have to lose if you don't have none of and uh, sometimes you don't have no option but a miracle the Lord come through you through or they went into the camp they wouldn't have done that under normal circumstances but there was if they sat there they died there was famine in the city one no food in the city that they got captured by the enemies they might get killed they didn't have nothing left to lose See that? And so, so it would be no doubt that their deliverance came from the Lord because when they got there, which leads me to the next principle, if God does it in, in an unusual way, don't try to God into doing it the way you think. He has to do it. God, I delivered this, this miracle in, in a very unusual way. The God, that the scriptures told us, based on the Lord made it. Found up to the Syrians, they were so by where they interpreted thought that the king of Israel had hired some hired guns to go in and surround them. Uh, they thought that he had hired the Hittites and the Egyptians. So when the Syrians heard all that noise, kind of like they ran, they bounced. They said, we need to bounce. What they were hearing was most likely the angels. What they were hearing was most likely the heavenly host. But they thought it was an earthly host. But anyway, they thought they were surrounded. And they said, we need to get up out of here. But you know what they did? They dropped all of their clothes. They dropped all of their equipment. They got scared and they bounced. Now, would you ever been in a situation where you ain't got time to pick up nothing? You just got to get up out of there? You ever been there? That's what they did. And they left their watches, but they didn't have watches. <laughs> they left their earrings, their gold, their bracelets, their necklaces, their, uh, their coins, uh, their money bags, their equipment, everything, excuse me, that they had. They, they bounced up out of there. They left it. They dropped it. So when the lepers with no Syrians in them, but all their cash, all their gold, all their goods. <laughs> so the principle we wanna get out of that is that don't think that God can't do it in an unusual way. Brother Jesse Duplantis, I don't know if you know who Evangelist Duplantis is, but he said something that he said, the Lord told him that completely changed his life. And when he shared and I heard it, it completely changed my life. Uh, Brother Duplantis was working on getting a private plane. And he said the Lord spoke, spoke to him and said, Jesse, I didn't ask you to pay for it. I asked you to believe for it. And he said that completely changed his life. Well, when he shared that testimony, that completely changed my life because it changes everything. Sometimes when you read promises, in the scripture, sometimes when the Lord gives you a vision, you start thinking, how am I going to pay for it? How is this possibly going to happen? How am I going to pay for it? You think pay, but God didn't ask you to pay for it. God asked you to believe for it. Down in your spirit, get in your heart, and that needs to take root in your spirit. That God is asking you for faith. God is not asking you to write the check. God is asking you to believe. He ain't asking you to pay for it. He's asking you to believe for it. Let that. Happen. And so the principle we want to get from here is that if God does it in and of say, it's got to happen this way. It's got to happen that way. Okay? You've got to let the Lord do it in whatever way he's going to do it. And you ain't going to never be able to figure God out. God literally has an unlimited number of ways to bring his word to pass. He did not ask you to pay for it. He did not ask you to figure out how what's going to happen. He asked you to believe. 
to believe him, okay? And they couldn't believe their good fortune. They were in the camp of their enemies. The enemies were going, weren't going to rest, weren't going to torture the girl, but they had they had food. They didn't drink. They left. They food. So they had they had clothes and they had cash from their enemies that they had left while they bound afraid of the noise that God sent them. It's why because it is not right for us to be Canaanites rest of the king and the kings to go and see. The king's horses were in the way. He saw garments and vessels which the Syrians had cast down in their hands. So in other words, while this, in a way, they dropped some more stuff. So before leaving the city, it said the king had sent all, all this stuff. Can you imagine driving down a road and it's like, it's like, Somebody dropped it to on you see the clothes down the street and you see all those and all these shoes. You're driving, you're like, What? You see all this cash and you see all these vessels and you're like, What? What? That's exactly what happened. You want to get this? gonna be a sign, okay? This miracle is gonna break. It may have started just with the cap. And there was a sign in the rest of the nation that this thing had really happened. Because again, if you're driving and you like somebody, you know, taking your, take your favorite clothing store, whatever it is you like, shop, go get your clothes. Take your favorite store, and it's like they had all that stuff. Just out there, that's what happened. And so, part of the king's cabinet. He's the one to a life. God did what is in him. Could they have? He was the focus about watching what you say. So, this man expressed doubt in the light of him. You look what you're going to eat thereof. You're going to happen, but you're going to get no benefit. So, that man that doubted and spoke against what I should say, the king appointed that man to charge of the gate of the city where all this stuff was happening. And you know what happened to him? On his way to the gate, all of the people that were rushing to do this stuff trampled him, and they trampled him to death. So in other words, he saw all the clothes, he saw all the food, he saw the cash, he saw all the vessels. He saw it. But he didn't get to get any of it because the people were so busy trying to get to it, they 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 trampled him and they trampled him to death. And so the word of the Lord came to pass because they trampled him in the gate. So he's standing there in the gate trying to figure out what's going on, trying to bring order to everything, and the people literally just ran him down. So the principle we want to get out of that is how the doubters are gonna die. Your unbelief can kill you. Didn't you just see that? people who said this was a hoax and it wasn't real and they weren't going to wear a mask and when nobody going to tell me what to do and your tank can't take away my freedom. Then you see a lot of them saying people die. A lot of them saying people who said it was a hoax, it wasn't real. And a lot of them ended up coming down with COVID and a lot of people try to act like they didn't have COVID and then, you know, play it off and then later on on their social media page, they admitted that they had contracted COVID. I didn't have COVID, by the way. I had uh, exhaustion, dehydration. I've just worn out, but no, I didn't have that. But uh, didn't we just see that with people? Because people don't recognize it's pandemic is the judgment of God. Remember, I told you at the beginning of this. Don't be making fun of the prophetic word. When God has moved in judgment and you find a scripture, you find the written here, a man, don't you belittle that. 
don't you laugh and spit in the face exactly what happened to this man. Just like, because people don't understand, God got the attention of the world because he was not pleased with what he saw. And a lot of people died. You know what that means? That means it's a call to repentance. It's God on high saying, I'm not pleased with the way I see you living. So you need to turn from the way you're living to a way that pleases me, to a lifestyle that honors me, to a lifestyle where you fear me, where you believe me. That's what the pandemic was about. And God slapped the whole planet. God shut down all the nations to get the attention of humanity to let us know he was not pleased with what he saw. Don't you belittle that. Don't you say that's, that's not real. Don't you say that's fake. Don't you say that the judgment of God is something to be trifled with. Don't you say that God can't judge. God is sovereign. He invented us. He, he, he sustains us. In him we live, move, and have our being. He died for us. He redeemed us and he judges us. So don't you spit the judgment of God back in his face like it's a light thing. But people that did that and people that thought that COVID wasn't real and they could just do whatever they wanted to do and they didn't have to change their ways and they didn't have to honor God and they didn't have to learn how to humble themselves before the Lord, a lot of them people died. And a lot of people that haven't taken it seriously have contracted COVID because, you know, uh, they just didn't take it seriously. Okay. And uh, the, this story tells us that unbelief will kill you. Unbelief will take you out when you don't pay attention to the word of God. Okay. When you don't pay attention to, you understand that? So now how is that important to us? This is about to happen for someone. You need to pick up the lessons of this prophetic word because it's about to be released in your life if you believe it. Do you believe that God can turn your financial situation around in a day? Do you believe the man of God when you hear the prophetic word? Do you believe the written word of God, the scripture, the more sure word of prophecy? Do you believe that God is able to take you from wherever you are to completely reversing your fortune in 24 hours or less. If you believe it, this miracle is for you. Hold on. So right now in the name of Jesus, I release this financial miracle to all that will hear, believe and obey that God is gonna turn your situation around in 24 hours, 24 hours, your entire financial life is gonna be different. But, oh, hey, Erica, Erica's here. What's up, Erica? So good to see you. But what you have to do is you have to follow the principles and learn the lessons in the teaching. You have to believe the man of God, believe the prophetic word. You have to not make fun of it. Don't spit on it. Don't belittle it. You have to believe that God is a miracle working God, that he has power on that level and he's willing to use his power to bless you. You have to go for it. Because what that means is that you might be down to your last. And I mean your last. I mean you might be eating crackers and water. I mean, you might be down to your last. And if you stay like you are, you're going to die. If you put yourself in the hands of your enemies, you go to people that, you know, they, they might kill you. Uh, you might be down to a point in your life right now in 2021 where you literally don't have anything to lose, where it just looks like it's all going to pop. The thing to do now is not suicide. The thing to do now is not end it all. The thing to do now is not <clears throat> expect a negative. The thing to do now is believe and receive this financial miracle that the spirit of God is releasing. That <clears throat> So also the principle is you can't limit the Lord to how he gonna do it. One more time. 
You cannot limit the Lord to how he's going to do it. Because God did something very unheavenly host that they heard, but the Syrians heard some noises. And they didn't know what it was. And it scared them so bad they thought they were surrounded by some hired armies. And they were so scared, they literally dropped everything and got out of Dodge. You see that? What were the chances that something like that could happen? But that's how God did it. So the principle from that is, is number one with the four lepers, you might be down and you might be up against the wall. That means you don't have nothing left to lose. That means you got to go for it. If an opportunity arises, you got to go for it. Okay? You can't be talking about, you can't be talking negative. You can't be speaking against it. If you're up against the wall, you ain't got nothing left to lose. You got to go for it. Okay? But also, you can't limit what God can do. Because God, the scripture says that the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. If you ever wanted to see an example of that happening in real time, that's this story today in 2 Kings 7. But that can happen for you. People that don't even like you give you money. Did you know that? People that don't even like you can bless you financially. People that don't even like you can give you property can give you houses, can give you land, can give you opportunities, can give you financial support. I am like you. God calls them to bless you. You know that the very substance of means, if the Lord so, can make turn that over, and you definitely want to be sure your blessing forward. Uh, not run your mouth about your business. Not that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about that uh, because the lepers understood that they were supposed to hear that the elf uh, and the king, they knew they needed to let the king know. So what does that mean? That means pay your taxes. That's what that means. <laughs> it means pay your taxes. That's what that means. And pay your tithes. Okay? Your taxes are what you owe the federal and your state and your local government. Your ties are what you owe the kingdom of God. Okay? So when you get blessed financially and it turns around, you got to tell the king, got to tell the IRS, you know, if you get them all, you know, don't try to act like you did that in pay taxes. You got to tell the king. But you just have to pay. You got to uh, your 10%. And then remember that your 10% is a set amount. You pay 10%, you pay it off the top. You don't pay everybody else and then pay God. You pay your tithes off and all you want of that, okay? And then <clears throat> after that, you're gonna watch the doubters get trampled in the gate. This is why, Lord have mercy. Hear me, hear me while I'm talking, hear me. You can't be hanging around people that are full in your hearing. You've got, see, if you've got a dream inside of you that looks like, I'll repeat, looks with the natural eye, like it's so far away, you got to tell that dream to your closest confidant. You've got to tell that dream to people that don't believe, okay? Because people that don't believe are going to get dead. Do you understand that? Do you understand that their unbelief is going to kill them? Do you understand that? Do you understand that making fun of God, talk about what God can't do? not taking the word of God seriously? Do you understand that that is blasphemy? Do you understand that'll get you killed? You can't be hanging around people like that. You can't be hanging around people like that. That includes religious people. Just cause people are religious don't, don't mean they people of faith. How do I know that? Because I can't, <laughs> I can't tell you the number of people in church that bad mouth. Bad, they're just bad mouthing, bad mouthing other people, putting other people down, always focused on the negative, always focused on people's faults. And when apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, or teacher, when the leader has a vision, when they've gotten a vision from the Lord, and even though the vision may be great, and even though the vision may take many days, weeks, months, or years to come to pass, if it's a vision from the Lord, if it's a great vision, what we're supposed to do is add our faith and our support to the vision. 
of our, our pastor or our apostle or our evangelist or whoever is the head of your your church if that vision is from the Lord. But if you start bad mouthing, you know what God gonna do to you? God gonna let you live long enough to see it happen, but you're not gonna get no blessing from it. Has the Lord done that before? Or, yes, he has. When he removed King Saul from being king over Israel and appointed King David, God let Saul live long enough to see David rise to power. And Saul tried several times, at least two times in scripture, to kill David, but he couldn't. God let Saul live long enough to see his replacement rise to power, and then Saul wiped out because Saul's bloodline was over. So that's a pattern with the Lord that the Lord will let you see those that believed, and then you are going to leave here. It's going to be over for you. That's how serious this is. So those of you that believe God on that miracle level, those of you that know that God is able, Okay, learn the principles. So those of you that are coming on late, or those of you that are watching this video after uh, it's aired live, go back to the top and watch it from the top so you can hear it from the beginning so you can get all the principles so you don't skip any of the principles. Okay, all right. That is what the Spirit of God is releasing. I believe it. I receive it. I'm not hearing anything to the contrary, and I'm not talking to anybody they would try to talk me out of that. Okay? Some of you listen to me, you have great things to do for the Lord. You have great things in here. You have great things you've seen in the spirit. You have great things you want to give birth to. That's going to take money. Don't let people tell you that's not going to take money. That's going to take money. M-O-N-E-Y. That's going to take money. Don't tell me God can't do that for you. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. So Jesse Duplantis believe God for a product that private airplane was $25 million and he got it and didn't have to pay for it. If God did that for him, he'll do it for you. You have to believe God on that level. That's why you have to hang out and operating on that level. And if you can't hang with him in person because of the pandemic, listen to their tapes, listen to their CDs, their DVDs, watch them on YouTube. So your faith can get up to that level so you can believe, believe you can't hang on people that are dragging you down. Because some of y'all listen to me right now, you can represent a story. You don't have nothing left. Okay? So you got to go. That's the prophetic word for this week. Let me see if there's anything else the Holy Ghost wants me to say. Because I'm fired up. Okay. When you see me close my eyes like that, I'm praying in tongues. When you pray in tongues, you charge your spirit and you invoke the Holy Spirit within your spirit to begin to speak to your spirit. Because when you're praying tongues, that's a prayer language, and the Spirit of God communicates with the Father and Son in heaven, and then, then whispers things, births things back to you. That's why you see me close my eyes and pray in tongues. That's one of the advantages of being a Christian. That's why you can't let people believe in tongues, tell you anything. That's 1 Corinthians 14. We're supposed to, because that's a level of communication between our spirit and the Holy Spirit and Father and Son in heaven. And it's not something that happens with your native language, your first language. It's not something that happens with the human mind. It's something that's in the realm of the spirit. It's one of the tools and the weapons that you have as a Christian. That's why you can't let your denominational teachings stop you from hearing from God. Don't you know that we've been prophesying about the pandemic since at least August of 2019? Go back and watch my videos from July and August of 2019, and you'll hear me talk about famine and pestilence was coming. That's the summer before the pandemic. We were talking about famine and pestilence was coming. That's one of the advantages of being a believer is the prophet. Okay, so that's why you hear me say time, you need the prophetic in your life. 
You need your own prophetic walk with God. Okay? All right. Amen and amen. Now, I told you every video I do, my decrease, I want to increase my God said word. We want people, as many believers in here, so it's an F5. So every video has to do in as many places as you can. Is that so important? Because there are people out there that need their finances turned around. And there are people out there right now who are at a point where a miracle is the only way. They're out of options. So, in as many places as you can share this video, put this video out there so people can hear the prophetic word of God and receive the faith to get their finances turned around. Okay? Because, uh, again, we want as many people as possible to hear the word of God because the way your faith is increased is you have to hear it. Somebody has to preach it to you, okay? I'm gonna say this last little bit and I'm gonna be through. Prophet Taylor, have you ever, ever walked in financial miracles? Yes, I have. How, like what? <clears throat> My car was paid off, not by me. My car got paid off a long time ago off before the time no more no no more interest no more nothing and it wasn't by me it was a gift somebody gifted me that and, and i haven't had no note on my car ever since then yeah, my car note off so yes it's possible and yes i walked in it because i'm always telling you how i'm practicing what i'm preaching i'm not saying anything to you that i'm not walking in and living in myself understand so yes it's real I've seen it happen, okay? So that's why you gotta believe it. I'm not making that up. I got no, because somebody else paid it off years ago, somebody that wasn't me, it was a gift to me. So don't tell me God can't do it. If he did it for me, he'll do it for you because there's no respect to person, all right? Amen and amen. Okay, so uh, this, this will be in my newsletter, but lots of good things happening this week is uh, first Friday's coming up. So my new hymn will be released on this Friday because I release a new hymn first Friday of every month. Then on second Thursday, not this coming Thursday, this first uh, Thursday of February coming up, second Thursday, I'll be starting uh, doing No More Genies. I have a really exciting uh, set of teachings that are coming forth on No More Genies that comes on the second Thursday night of every month, 7 o'clock p.m. But if you sign on to my newsletter, you know all that because all that stuff's in the newsletter. And then I'll be here next Sunday at my regular time, 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. So I'm super excited about all the things that God is doing in 2021. And I'm glad to be a part of the program because you hear me say it all the time. God don't need you. God has given you an opportunity to serve him, an opportunity to be a part of his kingdom. Not because he needs you, but because he loves you. And he wants to give you a chance not to waste your life. Okay? Amen and amen. That's it for this week. Uh, do I have any prayer request if you want me to pray about anything put that in the chat right now so i can see it if you're on facebook live put that in the chat if you want me to pray about it anything and we will pray before we leave and if not i will wind up this broadcast okay i don't think i'm seeing anything in the chat so all right, man. So that's it for this week, uh, uh, for my weekly prophetic word. And then on second, I'm super excited about the topic. I want to tell you about it now, but I got to wait. But I'll see you then. All right, amen. Have a good week. Expect that miracle tomorrow, the financial miracle. Expect it.